Hey everybody, whoever's watching us. Um, we are today going to be talking about magnesium, right? Mm -hmm. Magnesium. Um, and um, in case you don't know who we are, I'm Dr. Smith and I do family medicine here in Lawrence, Kansas. And this is Heather Fiore, and she does um, free state nutrition here in Lawrence, Kansas. Mm -hmm. But she does telemedicine stuff or tele um, nutrition stuff mm -hmm. too. So if you're not in Kansas, you can still do stuff with them, right? That is true. <laughs> I have, and I will. I'm not sick. I just have a little tickle. Okay. Um, and um, I do telemedicine, but only in Kansas. Sorry. Yeah, licensure. Yeah. Darn rules. <clears throat> right. Regulations. Yeah. Anyways. It is something that I think about too, because depending on what people need, if they're in sure. a different state and there is licensure there, I may not sure. actually do that. Sure. So maybe you could guide them still a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, you can cross state lines? No. You can. It depends on the state. Some states yeah. have licensure, some states don't. Really? Some like New York has this like certification thing that really doesn't protect the scope of practice, but just the name. Oh, like, cool. what is the point of that? Right. Anyway. All right. So today we're going to talk about magnesium. Yes. And um, what is magnesium? Right. So, right. So we have this whole theme about electrolytes. Right. So, which is how we got on magnesium. Yes. Um, and which actually when you're checking blood, Magnesium is an extra test that you have to do. You have to add that on. So if mm. your doctor is, if you're like, oh, I want to get my electrolytes tested, and you're specifically wanting to know your magnesium level, unless you say that, uh -huh. it won't be tested. Because it's just not something routinely that we test for unless you're having signs or symptoms of magnesium, or maybe you're have a you're at a higher risk of getting low up magnesium so it's just right. not something that we would routinely test for. okay there you go if you want to test it ask um so sure. anyways what does it do mm -hmm. um it's a cofactor in actually um, more than 300 enzyme systems that regulate reactions in your body okay um and um it does stuff like protein synthesis um, nerve and muscle uh, function, um, and then blood sugar control and blood pressure regulation. Um, it's b really big actually with ATP formation, which ATP is like our energy um, in our body. So it's really big in that. Um, and oxidative phosphorylation, that's basically formation of ATP. Um, and then it also um, helps in the breakdown of uh, sugar. Um, and then it helps, um, oh yeah, um, where it's like located the most is bone. So it helps in formation of bone, structure of bone. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it works with calcium and potassium in transport across the membrane. So oftentimes if one goes one way, then you know your other one is gonna go the other way. So it helps in transport. Um, and why is that important? Because that's important for your conduction, nerve conduction, and also for um, muscle contraction and then heart rate um, reg regulation. So interesting, right? A couple of minor body yeah. systems there. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, okay. um, anyways, uh, it's mainly stored in your bones. Most of it, it's like 50 to 60% stored in your bones. And then okay. only less than 1% is in your blood. So, um, that's usually how we test it, which is interesting. Um, and then the rest of it's in your soft tissue, like in your cells and stuff in and out of your cells, because that's where it's working the most. Um, making energy and um, helping with transport and stuff like that. So if such a small amount is in your blood, I mean, what is the value of measuring it? Right. There's, um, well, the blood isn't actually the uh, most accurate way to measure it yeah. from what they say. Um, it's the easiest way to measure it. Otherwise, it's doing tissue um, mm -hmm. samples and stuff, which you can get like epithelial cells from your cheek oh. and do it. Um, but again, it's kind of difficult. You can also measure it in your urine, but 
Um, the premise behind how we measure it is actually like if, because it's so tightly regulated, if it's low in your blood, then it's going to be low everywhere else. If it if you're not excreting any into your urine, mm -hmm. then you're holding it all because you're not you don't have enough. Got it. So it's more of an extrapolation of okay. what is going on. Does that make sense? Sure. So anyway. I mean, kind of like how you do with calcium too, I guess, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Okay. Um, and then and um, so your so this magnesium is main is regulated mostly by your kidneys. Um, and so that's why I'm saying that if we can measure it in your urine because your kidneys will excrete it into the urine if you're um, if you have more than enough um, which is actually good because if you eat a lot of it then um, most people don't become toxic I say most because there's always a caveat to that so if you have kidney dysfunction yeah. guess what you're not going to excrete it um, elderly people don't excrete it as well either. So just kind of some thoughts there. Um, but for the most part, if you're like a normal healthy individual um, and your kid, if you're a normal kidney function healthy individual, <laughs> then you're going to excrete it um, mm -hmm. like normal, like everyone else. Okay. And I guess you excrete about 120 milligrams a day. That sounds like a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Especially since, um, how much are you supposed to take in as an adult? For adults, it's um, it's like four hundred, right? So if you're like excreting a, a fourth of it, yeah, almost, yeah, that's kind of wild. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's kind of interesting that mm -hmm. you excrete a lot. Um, I guess we want to have more than less, right? I guess yeah, that's the idea, right? Is, yeah. Just get rid of it rather than not have enough. Yeah. How can we get it? Well, it's cool. It's in a lot of different things. And in a lot of the things that we're always saying, you should eat these things. So that's right, good they're news. like on our list. Yeah. So, uh, Are they on our Mediterranean diet list? Yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, leafy greens. I eat a lot of those. Right. Leafy greens. I got a lot of stuff in there. Um, legumes. My oh, favorite. I love those legumes. Love legumes. I gotta add in some legumes mm -hmm. to my diet. Um, nuts and seeds. Oh, I like those. Mm -hmm. And that's always the thing that I think of with magnesium. I always think about nuts. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, there are certain things that you can't get that are hard to get anywhere else. So, mm -hmm. if you're eating nuts, you're gonna get certain things in your diet, um, and you're gonna miss out if you don't, like selenium, which is, you know. I actually really eat hard. cashews um, because when I was, this was like probably, I don't know, six or seven years ago, mm -hmm. I um, started going with this crazy heart rate. Oh. It was crazy. I thought I was going to die. Um, like Scary. I was having trouble breathing and everything and it was getting worse and worse and worse. Wow. And I was on a monitor and it was just going crazy. Oh and it was because I was, <laughs> bless you, because okay. um, I was low on magnesium. Wow. Yeah. And so why were you doing um, that? I don't know. I think actually I think I was nursing at the time. Yeah. Um and so mm -hmm. I um I started eating a bunch of cashews and oranges. Uh-huh. And and then I and then you were better. I was actually within thirty six hours. Wow. Yeah. I ate so much cashews. Oh my god. <laughs> they were good. So nice. now like whenever I have a salad, I always throw cashews in there and just like add in. But spinach has it too. Right. There's your so. leafy greens. Um, also whole grains will have um, some magnesium and then milk and yogurt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, some fortified foods like cereals, you know, often have some little things like that sure. in there. And then of course you can always take a supplement. But that's all those kind of foods that we talk about a lot. All the time. Fiber There's and, you know. Coming on our list. These foods are good things for us. Yes. So just eat the food. I guess we talked about adults, but um, what about the other people in our lives yeah. that aren't adults? How much should they get? So for adults, um, it was 400 or so, what would we say, 410. Yeah. Um, and then teenagers, it's similar. Um, girls, a little bit less than boys. Um, um, Preteens need like 240. And then um, 
younger kids like four to eight need 130 milligrams and then toddlers need like 80 milligrams which you can get it from peanut butter oh yeah yeah totally. my son is a peanut butter holic he loves scoop of peanut butter yeah that's, peanut butter spoon that's what he says that's because it's legumes right yeah peanuts are legumes yum 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 i love peanut butter me too um so anyways the and then there's no actually recommended dosing for little babies right uh Not that has been out there i don't know i guess i just didn't i don't think there is, is right? i don't think there is i think it's toddlers and up so we aren't leaving babies out we just don't know how much they need so i guess enough is in the formula yeah. and the breast milk that you're getting I guess I didn't look that up, but I'm sure that it probably does go into the breast milk. Yeah, it must. There's like a bazillion, it's like gold, that stuff. It's Pretty amazing. Um, so like what happens if you're low, you know? I mean, I already talked about one thing, right? Um, if right. you're low, you can have a crazy heart rate. Yes. That happens. Yeah, what else? Um, but actually, um, the interesting thing is that this is so tightly regulated that it's kind of hard to get low. Huh. Unless okay. you have like the right, I guess the perfect storm. Um, but if you do get low, you'll you can get some like decreased appetite, nausea and vomiting, um, muscle cramps, fatigue, weakness. Um, as it worsens, you can get the heart rate stuff, um, and then you can get the numbness and tingling. Some people like if it's really bad can have seizures. Whoa, so good. yeah, and. If you get really bad, then you also get low on calcium and potassium. That makes sense. Right. But right. they go hand in hand. They are all working together, people. Mm -hmm. All working together. So, anyways. Okay. And then do you get, can you get too high? It sounds like it's really hard to do because your body it handles it. But, like, let's say your kidneys aren't working very well. If your kidneys aren't working um, well, then, yes, you can get high. All right. Um, but otherwise, as long as your kidneys are functioning normally, then you really can't get high. You okay. just excrete it in your urine. Um, so that's kind of a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. You can get high, actually, if, well, you can get high with supplements um, if you're taking a lot. Makes sense. Because some people like their supplements. I mean, if you're going to do it, like a little is good and more is better. That's kind of right. the mentality. Of yeah, but not so, so much. It's not true, but I'm just saying that's no. how people think of it. Yeah, so that's, yeah, not so much. And um, <laughs> so you can get high. You can get toxic on those levels. Okay. And um, But again, if your kidneys are working and you're not going crazy, then then you should be fine. Okay. If you're not, so like you don't want to be starting to give grandma um, magnesium mm -hmm. either because they don't process it the same. They don't excrete it as well. Okay. Um, and so you can get high with that. And of course, if you have kidney function. So um, talk to grandma's doctor. Yeah. Where you start giving her stuff. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, what happens when you get high? Um, mm -hmm. So the interesting thing is that just like milk of mag, Magnesia mm -hmm. is milk of magnesium. Sure. And so it's a laxative. And so if you take that, guess what happens? You get diarrhea. And it's the same thing. If you get high too much magnesium, you're going to get diarrhea. So there you go. Okay. Makes sense. Nobody wants that. Not really. Um, and it's because the magnesium salts are have an osmotic um, activity, and so they pull water into the gut, and then it also stimulates gastric emptying. So then not only are you pulling water into the gut to make things move, but then you're also stimulating it to make it move. There you go. So that's what happened. Double that's whammy the, right there. Yeah. Uh, and then you can also <laughs> get some, of course, cramping, because that's what happens when you get diarrhea. Obviously. And then an upset stomach, because sometimes the crampings make your stomach upset. So that's really what Good you get at your times. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So okay. We don't want to do that. So there must be medications that probably affect magnesium or. Oh, yeah. Well, um, more so magnesium affects medications. Okay. So um, magnesium supplements will decrease your absorption of your bisphosphonates, which we talked about that a little bit with calcium. Yes, I believe we did. Um, and so magnesium will also will um, decrease your absorption of this phosphate. So those are your bone medi medicines like Fosamax. Interesting. Um, and it can also form insoluble complexes with tetracyclines, which are antibiotics. It's a 
one antibiotic yeah. class. <laughs> so that wouldn't be good. Nope. Um, and then loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics will increase because this, you know, makes sense. It's kicking magnesium out into urine. Right. So it's going to increase your magnesium loss okay. in your urine. Um, potassium sparing diuretics actually will um, increase your magnesium in your blood, decrease the loss. Okay. Because again, it's holding on to magne it's holding on to potassium, it's also holding on to magnesium. Got it. So mm -hmm. those um that's like aldactone, spironolactone. Um, those can do that. So you would want to actually check your magnesium levels because they can get high with that. Okay. And then um, the other big one is proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole or, or Prilosec, Prevacid, um, Protonics. Those are all um, PPIs. Mm -hmm. And those actually, what happens is um, you will lose magnesium with those over time. But it's you have to be on them for like chronic use, so over a year. And then you can get low on your magnesium. And so the recommendation is actually to um, check your magnesium, mm -hmm. but that's not taught to us. So now we know um, we should, and you know, so you can ask your doctor if you go on a PPI yeah. and you're going to be on it long term. Sometimes you don't know that. So if it's right. like you have a little gastritis or indigestion and you're going to use it for six weeks, that's not long term and that's not really going to affect your magnesium. Yeah. But if you have, say, like Baird's esophagitis, which is like chronic indigestion and that's changing, that can change into cancer, then um, that's going to be long term treatment. Yep. If you get strictures um, in your esophagus, mm -hmm. that's going to be long term treatment. So if you're doing long-term treatment, you know that, then you want to ask your doctor to check your magnesium level before you start the protonics, or what, that's usually what you go on, um, or um, and then like during the process, you check it randomly during the process every couple months to make okay. sure. Um, and so like 75% of the time, um, if they get low, then you can just do a supplement. But there's like 25% of the time that that doesn't help and you have to stop the PPI or you have to figure something else out. Because yeah. if it's like, you know, you can't really stop it if it's on there for Barrett's. Right. But there's other things, right? Like Nexium, that's not a PPI. Um, Nexium is Azmeprazole, I think. It is Nexium. You're thinking of Zantac. Okay. Zantac is not. Zantac is an H2 inhibitor. Um, let me see. I think Nexium is as Mubrazole, and that would be. And that would still be one. Mm. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, as as Zomeprazole. So, it's easier so. to remember Nexium because you can pronounce that, but as Zomeprazole, it's harder to say. And it tells so that's you what a it PCI. is. Yeah, yeah. Nexium. Yep. There you have it. That's what I was Okay. So, you know, there are people at risk, um, anyone with like stomach issues, you know, like Crohn's, um, any kind of di like absorption issues, sure. celiac disease, which we've talked about before. Right. Um, poorly, poorly managed, I would have guessed. Yes. Right. Yeah. Or like before you get yeah. diagnosed or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, because you can't absorb it as well, the magnesium. Also, if you've had a bypass. Um, mm. especially if they bypass the ileum, which sometimes that does happen. Um, if you have something in the small intestine, um, that's going on and they have to take a section out or they have to right. bypass a section. Um, if they're bypassing the last part of your small intestine, which is your ileum, that will also put you at increased risk of decreased magnesium mm. absorption. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then what else? Alcohol. Gotta love alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, alcohol it tends to be like mul like multiple reasons um, mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have magnesium. One is because you're mm -hmm. drinking so much alcohol that you're not eating anything not nutritional, mm -hmm. and so you just have a nutritional deficiency. Um, but it also because you have GI problems, um, and then also you'll get a fatty stool from pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. And so because of the fatty stools, you're not able to absorb the um, magnesium either. Mm -hmm. You'll be deficient on vitamin D. 
sure. and that you won't be able to absorb the magnesium. And then they also get renal dysfunction. And then that, again, mm -hmm. like we said. Alcohol. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And then um, type 2 diabetes because you're usually excreting more in your urine because of the sugar. Again, poorly controlled. Poorly controlled. Yes, poorly controlled. Um, because your sugar is making you pee more, and so you're just excreting more. Yeah. And then, like I said, elderly, they don't have as much in their um, diet, and then also they can't absorb it as well. And then they're usually also kicking it out more in the urine. Right. So that puts you mm -hmm. just being old. I'm getting old. I'm over the hill. Yeah. Where is the hill? I don't even know. It's, Nobody a, it's told a moving me. target. Don't it worry is. About. I think that like it's 60 now. Yeah. So I'm not over the hill yet. And when you're 60, it'll be 70. It'll be 80. Yeah. I got to give myself 20 years to get there. Yeah. You're good. Uh, you're still good. Um, so everyone always, like we talked about before, you know, everyone wants to know, does it help me with anything? Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Because now it's not just about like, preventing deficiencies, but, mm -hmm. you know, is there some positive benefit health-wise to yeah. either supplementing or just getting yeah. enough food? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. obviously bone health, right? That's clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's involved in your bone formation. Yeah. It also actually is involved in the action of the osteoblast and osteoclast, and that's like what breaks your bones down and then builds it back up. Um, and so okay. it's also involved in those activities as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's actually multi, um, you know, multiple reasons. But okay. what studies have shown is that the higher your magnesium is, or, okay, let me rephrase that. When you have a higher magnesium level, mm -hmm. those people, as compared to, like, people that have less magnesium in their blood, okay. those the ones that have higher magnesium in their blood, not toxic levels, just higher, yeah. those people have a greater bone mineral density. Mm -hmm. So it has shown that. But there isn't any studies out there really that says we should be supplementing people with osteopenia or osteoporosis with magnesium. You know, I don't know, like most people in that category are elderly. So is that, you know, you would just have to watch that really carefully, I think. Right. Right. So maybe just getting them some legumes would be yeah. a better call. Yeah. Some different diet, I think, would be the best. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. So what's the story about heart disease? There's sort of some... Yeah. Is, um, so, does it help or not? Okay. So um, hypertension. Mm -hmm. um, so what they have found with hypertension is that um, it can lower your blood pressure, but it's only like two to three millimeters of mercury, which is nothing. Okay. Let's I mean, just face it. Why are we even talking about that? That's right? ridiculous. <laughs> That's like nothing. So it's not going to lower your blood pressure. Okay. But most people, so if you're only doing it with that, mm -hmm. then it's not going to lower your blood pressure. However, if you do it with, like, say, the DASH diet, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of times, isn't in the DASH diet, don't they do, like, a magnesium um, alternative, like, salt alternative? Or is it potassium? Salt it's potassium. Okay. So. Yes. Um, but, but, you know, a lot of the same foods that have the calcium yes. and the potassium have the magnesium. They're right. all packaged together. Yes, which is why we keep saying them. Yes. So. Is. Um, and that's kind of part of the DASH diet. So really, mm -hmm. is it the DASH diet? Is it the other dietary stuff that yes. is lowering your blood pressure? Probably. Yeah. So so really, um, it doesn't really affect your blood pressure. Don't think that your supplement of your magnesium mm. is going to affect your blood pressure. You need to be doing the other things, like the diet modifications. And that will affect your blood pressure. Yes. There you go. Okay. Cardiovascular disease. Now. There is some data that shows that when your blood level of magnesium is higher than people that are low. Okay. <laughs> Very carefully that. worded here. Yeah. <laughs> then yes. it does decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease. All right. Which is a good thing. 
So it's not really going to lower your blood pressure, but it might lower your risk of cardiovascular disease. Okay. And it seems that um, when it comes from the supplement, when it comes from food, there seems to be a direct link between de the higher magnesium foods and the lower cardiovascular disease. But is that because of the food Magnesium or because of all the other great stuff about these same foods? We keep saying that. Just eat food. That's all. You know, isn't it great that we can tell you to eat food? <laughs> I mean, that's like so great. I love to eat. <laughs> I know. I just love it. I do it multiple times a day. It's great. Multiple. Like all day long I eat. <laughs> And I eat a lot of those foods yeah. because like she keeps saying it over and over and over. And so I'm listening. Mm -hmm. And so we eat those foods in our house. Yes. And so hopefully our risk of cardiovascular disease will be lower. You and bet. so our blood pressure. Totally. But it's not so much maybe with supplements. The data isn't quite clear. Yes. We're yeah. always looking to figure out a way to put in a pill and take it. Just eat the eat food. It. Eat your food. Okay. Um, yes. The other interesting thing is headaches. Oh. Okay. Yeah. This is actually a, a really one. good one. Migraine headaches. If you are a person that suffers from migraine headaches. Yes. So magnesium deficiency is related to factors that promote headaches, including neurotransmitter release and vasoconstriction. Okay. So that's near, that's like when your blood vessel is narrow, yeah. not because of a plaque, but because they're contracting yeah. they're getting narrow people with migraine headaches tend to have a lower magnesium level in the blood and tissue mm -hmm. that has been found okay so the american academy of neurology and the american headache society you know like that society gives me a headache <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, okay. they have said that magnesium therapy is probably effective, probably effective for migraine prevention, but they have not come out and say like, this is how much you should be taking. Okay. Um, and so I, what, what I would say is that if you're a migraine headache, um, person, um, and it and your migraine headaches are like all month long um then it may be related to magnesium deficiency and so eating these foods would help mm -hmm. if it's hormonal i don't know um these foods might help a little bit but yeah. probably not as much although i can tell you that i'm a migraine headache person and mine are hormonal induced okay. and um Ever since I have been eating these foods, which I have been eating this type of a diet for a couple of years now, mm -hmm. um, but I keep modifying it as you're saying things and adding stuff to it. Um, but what I did notice was that when you, um, when I, when I changed my diet to these foods, my migraine, my hormonal migraine headaches actually got less severe. How yeah, do you like that? Yeah. So I mean. That's cool. You know, when the butcher knife is sticking through your eyeball and you want to throw up. Give me some spinach. Yeah. So <laughs> start that like changing your diet might actually um, be a good, that might be a good reason to change your diet. Wow. Hey, Selena. I saw that you said hi. So I want to say hi. Um, but so now it's more like there's a butcher knife stuck in my eyeball. Mm -hmm. But instead of like I would used to get this three day rebound headache afterwards, and I really actually mm -hmm. don't get as much of that um, at, when I treat my migraine appropriately. I Whoa. won't get as much of that. And That's I've cool. noticed the improvement with my diet. Wow. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. That's yeah. powerful. There you go. And it, only every so often do I get one of those that's like, I can't get the butcher knife out of my eyeball. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, but not nearly like what I used to have. Wow. And that's diet. So there you go. There you go. Magnesium. Just another reason. Right? So I've heard that magnesium could have an impact on like depression and anxiety. You know, I could see that because actually... Um, if you think about it, your neurotransmitters that you're mm -hmm. either involved in neurotransmitters. Okay. Um, and so if you are having um, some anxiety, depression, yeah. things like that, um, then absolutely I could see that it would increase. 
uh, improve, not right. increase, improve your symptoms. Okay. Um, the other thing that I was just thinking is sleep. Uh -huh. So um, uh -huh. if you're not too. getting enough sleep, your brain doesn't have the capacity to regenerate your neurotransmitters. And so if you're not sleeping enough and your magnesium is low, that's like a double whammy. Mm -hmm. So sleep is something like we okay. don't do enough of actually. Yes. Because society is so on the go all the yes. time. Like go, 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 I'm go, go. amazed at how little sleep some people can get by. Right? I know. Actually, most people can't get by. Like the <laughs> low amount is six hours. Oh. Mostly it's like six to nine hours. And yeah. women tend to need more sleep than men. Oh. Um, and But when you don't have enough sleep, you know, they might look like they're getting by, but they probably <laughs> have a headache, yeah. which is something that's pretty oftentimes seen. And I'm sure they can get moody. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, probably your, memory failure. Yes. Sorry. Well, I wouldn't say memory failure, but more like slow cognition. Mm, right? Yes. I could, yeah. Um, and then if you go like that for a while, you can actually start to hallucinate. All right. Yeah. Super. Yep. So get your sleep and eat your magnesium or eat all these foods. Say them again so that we yes, all can remember. Yes. I was just thinking we should review. Yeah. So leafy greens. Leafy greens. Legumes, legumes, nuts and seeds, nuts and seeds, whole grains, whole grains, dairy, milk, dairy. and yogurt. Yeah, and dairy. then maybe some fortified foods like cereal, and maybe some cereal. Yes, fortified. if it's a whole grain and it's fortified, then hey, oh man, talking? it's like a double win. That's awesome. How about that? It's like the easy button there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, we have beat magnesium to death. Yes. And um, just so everyone knows, um, next week, next two weeks. Just one week, I will not be here. One week. Heather is going to go to um, Venice and Rome and have a smashingly great time. And when she comes back, she's going to show us some pictures, maybe, yeah. hopefully. Um, and so we aren't going to do anything next week together. I might do something, but we aren't going to do anything together. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will rejoin each other in mm -hmm. two weeks. Yeah. And what are and we going to talk about? So we, yeah, just to like nice. round out the, sodium. yes, the electrolytes we should discuss. Oh, yeah. I'm already like feeling the blood pressure rise. <laughs> <laughs> Got the swollen feet happening. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought pickled juice. So. Um, anyways. Okay. So you guys have a great rest of your day. Um, like we always say, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, and if you have an idea that you want us mm -hmm. to talk about, um, please, 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 like toss it out because our um, our list is getting low. So give us some things to add. And we will see you in two weeks. Hopefully it'll start to get warmer. Yes. I'm going to bring some warm weather. For oh, Italy. please do. And, and some maybe gelato. We'll see. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great rest of your day.